So COVID is the talk of everything at the moment. Is having no testosterone in this, uh, during the time of COVID, actually the best? Of course, it's multifactorial. You need the yeah, proper yeah. vitamin D3, vitamin C, glutathione. Um, we're going to discuss these things, so keep watching. So COVID is the talk of everything at the moment. There are a lot of theories going around and sort of people making logical links with things. So today we're going to talk about, you know, having, having hormonal imbalances, low hormones, how it might affect your resistance to maybe fighting this off or getting the, the, the virus itself and some thoughts uh, from Dr. George Tuliatos. So Dr. George, so with COVID, I mean, I think you've had some exposure talking to some of the medical groups in Greece and things as well. What are your thoughts? What, what, th what things have you seen um, with regards to maybe having low testosterone? I mean, I think you, you've talked before about low thyroid adrenal sort of being affected and low cortisone. What, what are your thoughts? So there are some studies that point out that being already hypogonadal before entering the ICU or the ER, makes you more vulnerable and fragile to the cytokine storm. So a hypogonadic man has more mental fat, visceral fat, that releases human necrosis factor and interleukin-6, the basic cytokines, the inflammatory cytokines like prostaglandins also. So it's a different story being already hypogonadal at home, giving the coding and rush to the hospital hypogonadal rather than getting you going to the ICU because in the ICU they administer you corticosteroids that will crush your testosterone and also you have this kind of emotional uh, stress the, the the mental stress that will elevate cortisol and cortisolemia is antagonistic to testosterone of course so you were so, in the ICU we, we were talking about how there was some evidence showing that people with lower testosterone did worse. They, screwed up. they have low chances. They, they are higher chances of mortality, yes. Mm. <clears throat> but of course, it's more than that. You need proper immune system, you know. You need elevated glutathione, level, glutathione levels in the liver. You need elevated n cysteine levels in the lungs because it's a major antioxidant made in the lungs and in the liver. Also, you need um, calcifer, which is vitamin D3 that has been shown that under low levels is linked to mortality rates in the COVID also, but generally as well, mm -hmm. you know? And I guess abusing testosterone or anabolic androgenic steroids is not cool because uh, anabolic androgenic steroids are antagonistic to, uh, to, to, to corticosteroids that are catabolic. So then if you lack of cortisol, that also takes place, of course, under adrenal fatigue, then you don't have this inflammatory response. So uh, you need this uh, optimal cortisol in order to, to, to speed up your anti-inflammatory inflama response, you know. But um, crushing on cortisol is not something cool. People don't so, know that. Right? People don't know cortisol. cortisol is a good point to mention there. People don't know that cortisol actually helps us in times of stress. We release it to... Yes. There's, yes. Even, there's even some studies where administering, they're looking at it now. Fight over flight, yes. Yeah, yeah, administering post-PTSD. If, if you have a traumatic experience, administering... Also cortisol, yes, well stimulates gluconeogenesis, yeah. yes, stimulates gluconeogenesis that release blood sugar to the brain and to the muscles. So if you see a tiger running towards you, then you release cortisol to speed up and to have alert. Yeah. So but having, progressively having stimulations, yes, of the adrenals by catecholamines will elevate cortisol. Now, uh, progressively, this will crash, will fatigue adrenals. We have a, a secondary sufficiency. And in this case, you don't have the response of uh, the immune response that is triggered by cortisol. You know, it's like pr prostaglandins, prostaglandins. You need a little bit of them to have the, the, the flame, you know, mm -hmm. not too much, but not too low. Yeah. So I think that so if you're trying to prevent getting any virus, I suppose, COVID or not, you you want a good immune system, you want a good diet that can involve uh, having your hormones optimized. Obviously, there's there's a strong link between between that evidence for like in Hashimoto's and things regulating the immune system with testosterone and estrogen and it is anti inflammatory. So maybe the anti inflammatory properties there can help with the 
the effects of, of, of any virus, I suppose, causing inflammation. Also, the gut, the intestine plays a major role to the immune response, you know. The, the, so you need the good bacteria, like tobacculous probiotics, you know. Yeah, I think that's going to be a lot. They're going to go that into sort of the gut more, aren't they, in, in medicine, more links with mental health, physical health, immune system. You know, that's why there's a strong link with autoimmunity in the gut, right? So, yeah, okay. So, yeah, I think, so we were just basically mentioning then about... Uh, about why? Uh, I'm sorry. Yeah, and, uh, yeah, yes. Yeah. Our chat before, uh, having low testosterone in IT yeah. versus before you come in. Yeah. On what? the other hand, why women live more with COVID and have less mortality rates? So I guess it's 55 over 45 women survive against men. And they believe that testicles possess receptors for angiodesin converting enzyme is where the virus is attached. So in these receptors, it gets, gets through the lungs, okay, the respiratory system. Now, under this theory, if we castrate men, then it means that they have no, uh, the, the lack of the receptors where the virus is gonna be, go and link to. But I guess it's not because if you castrate a man, it becomes hypogonadal. So this is not also a good scenario. And that's why they believe that administrating estrogens, perhaps it will make men more sustainable to, to COVID, but just a theory, you know? Yes, because we were talking about that, that somebody said because of the, the, the ACE um, receptor, basically, the ACE receptor, the, the, ACE2, you, ACE2 um, receptors, the, the, the virus can go in there. But I mean, look, they're everywhere, like in the... Yeah, in the lungs also, yes. You know, they get through the lungs, the ACE2, yes. So, I mean, and, you know, having no testosterone is a good thing. Testicles are full of them, you know, so they believe that we die because of our testicles, you know, but on the other hand, having low testosterone is not cool as well. No. Well, per perhaps the two are being conflated, you know, one, acquiring the virus versus two, fighting the virus, and one shouldn't make the... Um, supposition that oh well let's just take away all the testosterone for men or, or women don't get it as much as men well maybe it's because men who, who do not survive as well as women from covid maybe it's because they have gone hypogonadal yes men in general have more testosterone than women uh but that doesn't mean that they're all uh optimal uh with with the hormone balance and so maybe that's what we're looking at now statistically the men who die are over 70 with underlying diseases now, it's more likely over 70 to be hypogonadic in first place, you know? They don't make it. 50-year-old guys, 40-year-old are more likely to make it, you know, and survive. Yeah. I guess it's multifactorial, you know, it's not just one or, or the other, but it's, multi, it's, it's about the immune system, the respiratory condition. If you have low oxygen saturation, you're not able to breathe well, you know? You cannot fight the infection. I remember we were talking about the study early on about uh, is a for flu, and they used um, male mice, and um, I think they looked at uh, testosterone levels in, um, in in the male mice and the uh, ability to, to get the flu. And I think what they found was yes, the higher testosterone allowed them to get the flu more readily, but the mice with the higher amounts of testosterone actually had a greater survivability uh, for the flu compared to those. Who, um, who had lower levels of testosterone. So while she may contract the flu more easily in the study, you tended to survive with a more optimal, higher levels of testosterone. So I don't know if you can draw any conclusions from that, but I thought- Tobacco was... also, I mean, lowers uh, respiratory capacity, you know, smoking. Yeah. All right, what do you think, Sam? Yeah, no, it's just some interesting thoughts, isn't it? Because we still don't know anything really about this virus. Well, we know some, but not enough to start really effective treatments. So I'd, I'd be interested to see if there is anything hormonal. And of course, you need to work out. If, if you don't work out, your uh, your physical stamina goes downhill, your uh, cardiorespiratory capacity and your physical overall condition. So by sitting on the couch indoors during the carton is not good for your overall health, you know? Mm -hmm. So you need to, to be around and at least uh, walk, perform some cardio, and some uh, resistance exercise in order to burn this visceral fat. Otherwise, more cytokines will be released out of your, of your, of your, you know, your, your, your belly fat. You know. Mm. Do you know what else helps to reduce the cytokines? 
Uh, prostaglandins are a lower by steroid inflammatory drugs. Yeah. Yeah. And also bracticides. Do you have alpha? Really? It's turning into a running joke. Oh, no, it's true. Yeah, it does reduce TNF alpha and TGF beta 1 and some other cytokines that come about. So. Yeah, I've heard that. Crazy yeah. drug, right? Eh? Anyway, oh, that's good. Yeah, cool. All right. Should we yeah. wrap it up then? Now, yeah. it's up there. now we have back the masks here in the supermarkets, pharmacy stores, restaurants. Crazy. Yeah. We have a rebound in, uh, in COVID here. This it's is my mask. Yeah. Hey, uh, it probably you is. look like you look like this, this guy in Batman. How you call? Uh, oh, no? yeah. Um, hey. Hey, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh, that's I, our COVID uh, discussion done. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Asking the gym is not good because it elevates your matter eh? oh, yeah, yeah. oh yeah, that's true. <laughs> metabolic acidosis, yes. Yeah. So that was COVID. Just some thoughts um, about some theories that pe that we've heard and the hormones and how they might affect the immune system um we're going to obviously find out more as this virus probably stays around whether it comes back it, it may do um even when it goes away some hopefully maybe over the years we someone will start pointing the direction of optimizing hormones finally that's going to help uh, immune system maybe that'll catch on we don't know but thanks for watching um if you like the video please like subscribe ring that notification bell and um We'll be back next time. So thanks for watching. Goodbye. Yeah, thanks for watching. Bye. Thanks, George. Cheers, thanks. George. Bye-bye.